Yeah. Analytics off the chain, all the channels not the same. Jake and Kyle, you know the name. Headline the nation, we running the game. What is up, Headliner Nation? Your boy Chris Chow's here for the Fantasy Headliners. Do not adjust your screen. It's okay. I'm supposed to be here. Why, you may ask? Because we're diving into some off-season content early on. I know it's Super Bowl Sunday this Sunday, but you know what? It's a great opportunity to dive into the teams who are done and what they need to do this off-season because the off-season workbooks are my specialty. I love uh, you know putting the GM hat on and, and we can see where these teams could be in 2022. Two, why is this important? Because everything they do transaction-wise will impact your fantasy football club. So nevertheless, let's dive in to see what these teams will be. And we'll start off with the Arizona Cardinals 2022 workbook. So like I'm saying, I mean, the Arizona Cardinals season was a success overall on paper. We can't say that it was a bad season. They did improve in a lot of aspects overall, finishing the season 11-6, second in the NFC West, but they did see levels of stumble as the season wore on. Offensively, I mean, their statistics are very sound. Basically top 10 in every major statistical category with the exception of points four, just missed the top 10 with 26.4, sitting 11th, man. Defensively, they were a lot better than I had predicted. I knew that defensive front was going to be good, man. The front seven was very much loaded, but the ba defensive back end is where I thought they would struggle. They weren't. They were seventh where the run defense was 20th, and we saw kind of that uh, anomaly in, in perspective in how we believe that this Cardinals team was going to be. They did start fast this, uh, at the uh, beginning of the season, but finished slow. And I mean, the dominance that we saw early, what did they win? Seven games on the road, over 10 points, NFL record at that point. And I mean, how did they end up stumbling the way they did? And I mean, for me, I kind of peg it to the Green Bay Packers contest they played back in week eight. And when Kyler hurt his ankle, the high ankle sprain, he ends up missing a, a handful of contests. When he did come back, he did play extremely well against the Bears in the rainy conditions in Chicago, scored, what, four touchdowns? But then he never looked the same. This offense kind of morphed where they were kind of going back. And I got to put blame on Cliff Kingsbury because I'm a Kingsbury guy. But I mean, the way that they produced and did not produce, I should say, you know, especially with Kyler not running the ball, that led me to believe that uh, Kyler was playing more hurt than let on. And, and this uh, this hurt this offense uh, uh, wholeheartedly, especially with the way Kingsbury was coaching this team. Not having Rondale Moore playing in space and catching the ball and trying to make plays after the catch was another uh, head scratcher for me because I thought by, you know, week 12 they would have figured this out, and they did not, especially with DeAndre Hopkins when he went on the shelf on the IR with his injury, completely derailed everything in this offense. They went Went to the ground game, leaned on Connor. You know, he was the primary source of offense, but I believe that was a mistake because it made them very predictable, especially with Kyler not running the ball. He wasn't finding his wide receivers like we would have had uh, uh, hoped he would have. And I mean, the season as it went, they ended up losing in the wild card round to the Rams. And I mean, it just was a horrible showing in that respect. I mean, but you know, Kyler, we got some news, man, breaking news. Kyler, you know, he removed all of his branding from the Cardinals on his Instagram page and social media pages and, you know, Maybe he just wants his bag, man, and I think that's where he's going. He wants to get paid. He wants to do that. I have heard he's uh, trying to uh, maybe promote some clothing line that he's got in the works, but it's definitely something to keep tabs on, even though I don't think Kyler is going anywhere, man. When it comes to the salary cap, why is this important? Because, like I said, this is how these teams maneuver, man, and the ins and outs of how these contracts are structured, everybody knows the salary cap can be manipulated. However, the Cardinals, as we sit today, it is uh, worth noting the NFL salary cap is going up from 185 to 208 this season, man. And right now, the Cardinals with that new cap space. 5.395 in free space. That is not a lot of money, especially when you got top uh, unrestricted free agents to contend with, like Chandler Jones, 31 years old. 14.5 on the market value is what he'll be coveting. Zach Ertz, the trade that they did. Did they make him just a rental player? I would be shocked if that's the case, but his the market value right now, 7.6 million, even though uh, you know they would love to bring him back. That's going to be a little bit harder. AJ Green, 33. I don't see him coming back to Arizona. He did not look like he fit the bill 
role in this in this offense as the year went on. Looked disinterested. Looked like you know he was not uh, reaching out for passes, etc. We saw play uh, fall off from AJ Green this year. I'd be shocked if they re him uh, re up him in this offseason. Christian Kirk, man, 25 years old. His market value is an astronomical 11.8 for a secondary wide receiver. I would not pay this if I am the Arizona Cardinals. I think you just cut bait at this point and you lick your chops and you move on. You don't need Christian Kirk at that price, especially when you don't have money to spend. You're going to need to go fund me pretty quickly here, man. Uh, uh, James Conner, man, 26. He did sign that one-year deal. His market value is pretty decent, $5.9 million. And I mean, he stayed relatively healthy for a majority of the season. He played in, what, 15 contests this year and produced a lot of good numbers. But I mean, again, he should be a priority sign. And Chase Edmonds, also 25 years old, 5.2 on the market value. And I mean, you know, the cards on the books are going to have to get extremely creative as there isn't much wiggle room. Extending Kyler, you know, to drop that cap number isn't really going to help. His cap hit right now is around 11 million bucks. So even if you re-up him and you put a lot on bonus money, you could maybe save a couple million bucks. Redoing DeAndre Hopkins' deal is a massive in uh, massive need, I should say, in this in this department. $25 million cap hit right now for D-Hop, and he's got a $29 million in dead funds if they try to cut him or trade him at this point, which is unlikely, but it's, it's worth noting that they definitely can move that money around in bonus money to drop that cap hit from 25 to give them some uh, relief in that sense. Jordan Phillips is a potential cap cut, and you gotta, this is where the GM hat comes on, because you gotta make some moves. You gotta make the tough decisions. You know, even though Jordan Phillips, uh, you know, he signed that deal, there is a savings potential. 10 million bucks with only 3 million post June 1st on dead funds. Rodney Harrison, Justin Pugh, both on the offensive line. If you release or cut them, it's $19 million with only 4.7 million going to dead funds. But now you got O line issues to contend with more so, and you don't want that. Jordan Hicks could save another six million with three million going to dead funds so i mean overall on the potential you got about what 29 to 35 million dollars where you can get some money back here and i mean they got to get creative obviously going into the draft is where you want to you know uh make uh, your team round out you do have good foundational pieces but these guys especially guys like chandler jones you know he's got to be a must and they're gonna have to get creative to try to re-sign all of these players man when it comes to the nfl draft man i gotta put the uh, caveat on this go subscribe after the show to headliner you because you're going to see a draft to talk a player scouting reports everything of the sort at headliner you uh, by myself yours truly and others we will be uh, dissecting all the rookie class to help you guys understand who these players are right now the Cardinals got a first second third fourth from the Ravens a fifth from the Eagles sixth and seventh man for the first pick I think you know this is where I'll, I'll, I'll stop here is where I'm saying they should go with their first pick today and I mean DB to me is a top priority. If they don't sign Chandler Jones, you got to think edge presence or D line presence has got to be another priority if they can't sign him. I think, you know, this is kind of where I would go with the first round pick. I think you really desperately require doing a defensive back to round out this defense that much more. Playing with Buda Baker, he needs some help, man. Give the guy some help, and they need a top dog on that back end for dar darn Skippy, sure, man. I'm telling you. But like I said, go hit up Headliner U and you will get everything you're coming for for these rookies as we break them down, man. But, I mean, the best offensive talent, they still got good stuff in the cupboards, man. Kyler, D-Hop, Rondale, Andy Isabella. So if you're not signing Christian Kirk, maybe we finally see Andy Isabella take a bigger role on this offense, which wouldn't be a bad thing. This guy's got skills, he's got abilities, and could you basically say that his statistics could mirror something of a Christian Kirk? I wouldn't be surprised. I think he does have that ability. But completely understanding how how to use Rondale more in this offense is a must and a necessity that they require. Cliff Kingsbury, I'm looking at you, man. If you're not going to improve your overall aspect of how you close out seasons and remain creative because everybody watches film, they're going to dissect what you do. You need to be more creative. Cliff, I'm looking at you, man. Your seat is going to get warm and toasty if you don't do this next season. Defensively, Marcus Golden, he was on that cheap deal, but he led this team with 11 sacks this past season. Buda Baker, J.J. Watt, Isaiah Simmons, and Zayvon Collins are your top dogs on this defense as we sit today. And I mean, Zayvon Collins and Isaiah Simmons, it's a, it, it's a good tandem at the linebacker position. I Simmons took off a little bit better this season, but Zayvon was kind of still put in the with the shackles and they didn't let him play as much, which I find to be surprising. I, I know he was a liability in the run game. That's why he didn't play a lot. Hence why the 20th rank on the run defense. But I mean, I 
still believe that this team does have a lot of potential and they could move forward. But I mean, again, do we believe they are Super Bowl contenders, especially in this division that is so difficult to play in with, uh, you know, the Rams, the Hawks, the 49ers. I mean, they're all good, talented clubs and they're going to definitely have to round it out, get creative on the cap and hit up on all your draft picks. It's, it's going to be a very difficult offseason for the Arizona Cardinals as there are holes to fill, but I still believe they will be a contender in 2022. Well, there you have it. That is the offseason workbook for the Arizona Cardinals. Clearly, they got a lot of work to do to continue to move forward and build this roster out. There is savings to be had, but I mean, again, they got their work cut out for them. Just a little bit of a snapshot so you guys can understand what they are dealing with. But nevertheless, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time. I am out. Analytics, all the chain, all the channels, not the same. Jake and Kyle, you know the name. Headline Nation, we running the game.